the molluscans were aquatic in nature. They mainly inhabit the aquatic places, say it marine or say it freshwater, but they are mainly aquatic in nature. Now coming to the next phylum is phylum Echinodermata. Okay. Let us break the term. Dermata has come from dermatology that means study of skin or in general you can say dermata means skin and Echino has come from hedgehog that is an animal you can, you can see it in the zoos as well as in the jungles who have the entire body covered with spines. So from this two and the definitions concerned we can make out that Echinodermata means those animals whose skins have presence of spines. Skins have presence of spines that is the entire body has spines. So the first characteristic I can say about the phylum Echinodermata that is the skins are having spines. The second point is again they are triploblastic, they are having coelom, they are having coelom. But the contrast that we are going to find in case of the Echinodermata is about their symmetry. The main feature is the adults are having radial symmetry whereas the larva they are having bilateral symmetry. Radial symmetry adults and bilateral symmetry the larvae. Okay, the larva has bilateral symmetry, but when it changes to adults, the adults get radial symmetry. So we have got a phylum where we can distinguishly exhibit the radial symmetry. So till now, what are the points we have discussed? Skins having spine, triploblastic and silomates, radial symmetry in adult, bilateral symmetry in larva. Now about habitat, they are also marine. They are also marine. They mainly take up the water as their habitat. They may be fresh water or they may be aquatic. But they are marine in nature. Okay. The next point is the skeleton. Their body is covered with a hard skeleton that is made up of CaCO3. That is calcium carbonate. The body is made up of hard skeleton that is CoCa3 and or else it is also called as calcium carbonate. Remember, in Porifera, we have heard about water canal system. Here also, there is a water canal system which is used by the Echinodermatas for the purpose of movement. Okay, so they are also having water canal system, very typical one and that is helping them for the sake of movement. Movement. Actually, what happens? The appendages or say the limbs, they are having holes. At the point of the limb, they are having holes. Okay, And the water goes inside the, the holes. For movement, they release the water from their body, which creates suction. And they can move their leg from one position to the another. That is, water's movement inside and outside the body is helping that very animal to move from say this place to this place. So the movement is by the movement of the water. That is why it is said that the water canal system is very typical and helping the animal to move from one place to the another. There is no head. There is no head. There is no tail. There is only a body. There is no head and there is no tail as such. The body is not having any head, neither having any tail, neither having any right part, neither having any left part. That is, the body is not having as such differentiation of head and tail. So what are the characteristics? Let's discuss once again. Body is full of spines, bilateral symmetry in larva, but radial symmetry in adults, triploblastic silomates, open circulatory system and there is a water canal system for the movement of the organism and there is no head, there is no tail, there is no left, 
there is no right okay and very very importantly their body is covered with a shell that is made up of calcium carbonate and also one point that you have to remember that is they are exclusively marine and found in fresh water as well as in marine region but they are inhabiting the places of water the examples for echinodermata can be asterius rubens a s t e r i a s asterius that is starfish that is starfish asterius rubens that is starfish also the example can be sea urchin so one example is sea urchin and another example is asterius sea urchin and asterius rubens that is starfish these are the two examples of the phylum echinodermata so i think the points are clear spiny skin triploblastic coelomates radial symmetry in adults bilateral symmetry in larva presence of heart skeleton no head no tail no left no right and examples are sea urchins and the asterius that is starfish so coming to a more advanced phylum after echinodermata that is protocorda now all of you who are looking at this class please put your hand at the back and press press it in the middle if you can press at the middle of your back this portion you can feel some hard bony line that is going across and move your hand upwards you can feel that line okay from here till here that line is entirely moving along your back you can touch that it's a totally bony structure that you can find and completely press it you can find it that structure is commonly called as spinal cord okay and the protocordist for the first time exhibit the presence of spinal cord else called notochord notochord is present for the first time there is a development that is exhibited in case of the phylum protocordata that is presence of notochord though this notochord is not present for the entire period of the life of the animal but it is present for the first early life say for the first few years there is a presence of notochord later on it dissociate but at least this phylum has for the first time shown presence of notochord and that is why they are called primitive chordates proto proto for primitive and chordata for chordates so they are showing primitive chordate characteristics that is they are having the notochord at the early span of their life okay i think i am clear the next point is they are exclusively marine they are also exclusively marine found only in water they are exclusively marine found in water okay the next point is they are having bilateral symmetry and triploblastic bilateral symmetry and triploblastic okay the fourth point under them is the muscles attach to the notochord the muscles present in the body of this phylum of the animals under phylum protocordia the muscles attached to notochord and definitely if the muscles are attaching it to its the notochord that means the notochord will show wonderful movement the organism itself can move wonderfully because muscles are attached to the notochord it is also coelomate there is a presence of true coelom there is a presence of true coelom it is slowly developing so there is no point that it will not be coelomates the notochord is present at the back the notochord is present at the back as you can see for us also it is present at the back so the notochord is present at the back okay so here we can conclude the major characteristics of the animals under phylum protocordates notochord is present though the notochord may not stay for the entire life span but it is present in the first early years they are called protocordata that is 
primitive chordates. They are bilaterally symmetrical, triploblastic as well as silomates. The muscles attach themselves to that of the notochord, helping the protochordates to move easily. Then you have the notochord is helping in making movement by present at the back, back of the body of the organism and the examples for the protochordates are balanoglossus. A very nice example is balanoglossus and herdmania. Herdmania. Balanoglossus and herdmania. These are the two examples of phylum protochordata. For your extra information, if you are interested for some competitive exams in biological sciences, then you can understand that protochordates can be again divided into three classes, Eurochordata, Hemichordata and Cephalochordata. This is something extra from your syllabus, Eurochordata means the chordate is prominently present at the tail region. Hemichordata, half of the body and cephalochordata means the head region, the head region. So, protochordates can be divided into eurochordata, hemichordata and cephalochordata. These are the classes. Okay. So, here we end the major invertebrate of the animal kingdom. Invertebrates means what? Till now, we have not found vertebral column except protochordates where the vertebral column else called notochord is present in the first few years of their life then slowly getting dissociated. So, you can say that protochordata or balanoglossus or herdmania is the bridge between invertebrates and vertebrates. From now, we are going to enter into the phylum vertebrata that is the last phylum for kingdom animals.